Hello everyone, and welcome to another podcast from Intrepid English. My name is Lida, and I'm an English teacher here at Intrepid English. And today, the Intrepid English teachers will share the language learning myths that they hear most often. While most of our ideas come from our teaching experiences, we also drew from our own language learning journeys. Did you know that all our Intrepid English teachers can speak at least two languages? This is a part two of the Language Learning Myths podcast. Don't forget to check out part one. Hello, I'm Eleanor and I'm an Intrepid English teacher. There is one language myth that I often hear about, and the myth is that there is one efficient method to learn English quickly, painlessly, and without practicing. The teacher knows this method, and they just don't want to tell the student about it. Well, I'll tell you a secret. The best way to learn a language is to try different methods and find the ones that work for you. You should never focus on just one thing. And then, when you feel like you're not making much progress anymore, you might have to try a different way to improve. Remember to practice the skills that you don't enjoy practicing too. For example, if listening is easy, but you struggle with writing a short text, you should spend more time practicing writing so that it's just as easy. There is a good reason why most languages have a variation of the phrase, practice makes perfect. Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm an intrepid English teacher. One language myth I often hear is I can't learn a language fluently without the language learning gene. There is no such gene. Speaking a foreign language is a skill that requires attention and training over time. It is more of a language learning muscle than a gene. Some people may find speaking a new language easier. Others find playing a musical instrument or basketball easier. Can you learn it anyway? Of course. Motivation and attitude play a significant role in learning a language. If you tell yourself you'll never learn a language, you likely never will. Hi, Lorraine here. And the next myth is something I hear very often and something I feel quite passionate about. The myth is that it's better to learn from a native English-speaking teacher. And this is what I say to those students. You should learn from the teacher that suits you and can help you to improve. Teachers who are native speakers know how to use the language as their second nature. That doesn't mean that they are experts in grammar or writing business emails. If having a teacher who speaks your native language gives you the confidence to take classes, that is the best teacher for you. If you want a teacher who has gone through the same experience of learning a language, you should learn with a non-native speaker. Don't limit yourself only to native speakers as language teachers. I recently had this conversation with my connections on LinkedIn. You can find the link to that conversation in the episode notes. At Intrepid English, we are very proud to have native and non-native English speakers. All of our teachers are extremely experienced, qualified, friendly, approachable and knowledgeable. There will be an Intrepid English teacher who suits you. So come on over to the Intrepid English website and find a teacher who you relate to and you will enjoy your English lessons. I'm Maddox. Many of my students think that they sound more fluent when they speak fast. In English, intonation and sentence stress are very important. Take pauses and don't forget to breathe. If you speak slower, it makes you easier to understand. It can also make you sound more fluent. Often when students speak fast, they slow down when they come across a more difficult passage. If you speak slower, it's less noticeable because your speech sounds more uniform. Finally, speaking slower gives you more time to construct the next thing you want to say. If you think you already speak slowly enough, you can probably slow down even more. Don't worry, our intrepid English teachers can help you find the right speed suitable for you and your English level. Book a free trial lesson today. Hi, it's Lida here. And this following myth is very close to my heart. The Queen's English, also known as BBC English, RP, or Received Pronunciation, 
is the only correct kind of pronunciation. When I was a child and I was first learning English, we were supposed to learn the Queen's English. My teacher told us that to speak well, we needed to pretend like we were holding a hot potato in our mouth. For years, I thought native English speakers must be very uncomfortable when they speak. And then I learned that less than 3% of the UK population speak RP. It can be harder to learn and understand than many other accents, especially because of its pronunciation of R. Yet, RP is the accent most non-native students still learn at school or in courses because it's used as a model in textbooks and dictionaries. I don't know if the Queen's English is still the most recognizable British accent, but it is evolving and losing its status as a more appropriate or professional accent. And if you don't believe me that the accent is changing, just watch the Queen's Christmas message from 1957 and 2020 on YouTube. You should notice a significant difference in the way the Queen pronounces her vowels. As with every other accent, it is important that you can understand it. But don't worry if you don't sound like the Queen. I tell my students they shouldn't worry about their accent, let alone making them speak RP. I don't speak RP. So it's not appropriate for me to offer this speaking model because I could make mistakes and confuse my student. The most important thing about your accent is whether you can be understood. Everything else is a bonus. I'm Gemma and something that my students often ask about is do they have to master one level before trying anything more complex? It's really easy to get stuck practicing one thing over and over again. Students often think that they can't move on to the next topic unless they've mastered what they're learning now. When you learn a language, you need to revisit things and build on them over time. You're also more likely to get bored and give up because you don't feel like you're making any progress. So if you're climbing a tall mountain, it might be better to take the scenic route that wraps all around the mountain rather than trying to force your way straight up over the cliffs and vegetation. To make a good sentence, you need to have some vocabulary knowledge, know the word order rules, use tenses and prepositions and other things. Just because you sometimes make mistakes in past simple sentences doesn't mean you can't study present perfect for example. It just means you need to revisit the past simple later once you've had more practice. This content was written and recorded by the Intrepid English Teachers. You can find out more about any of us on our profile pages. If you have any questions or you would like to request a topic for a future podcast, you can post it on any of our social media pages. You can also book a free trial lesson today and talk about your learning goals with an experienced English teacher. Let us help you on your language learning journey. Thank you for listening and have a great day.